Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can implement parent model relationships between your model objects and Vapor. I have a simple Vapor app here that has two different model objects. The first model object is called Acronyms, which stores a short form of an acronym like BRB and a long form of an acronym like Be Right Back. The second model object is called User. It contains a name, email, and password for each user. I can try this out by using rested to create an acronym and then list the acronyms. I can also create a user and list the users. Right now, these two model objects are not connected together, but I would like each user to be able to have their own collection of acronyms. Basically, what I need to do is add a user ID field inside acronym that contains the user that this acronym belongs to. This is effectively making user the parent of acronym. To set up a parent-child relationship between two model objects in Vapor, there are three steps. First, you need to add a property within the child model object to store the ID of its parent. Second, in the child object's prepare method, you need to use Vapor's parent method to automatically create the ID for that parent object inside the database. Third, you need to use Vapor's helper methods to get the parent of a child object or vice versa, the child of a parent. Let's dive in. The first step is to add a property to the child object to store the ID of its parent. To do this, I'll open acronym.swift and I'll add a new property called TIL user ID. I'll also add some code to set it properly in the various methods here. The second step is in the child object's prepare method. I'll use Vapor's parent method to create the parent ID field in the database. To do this, I just pass in the class for the parent, TIL user, and I specify that this is not optional. If I jump to the definition, I can see that behind the scenes, Vapor is creating an ID field for me in the acronyms table. Now let's build a project with Vapor build and revert the database tables with Vapor run prepare dash dash revert. This is necessary because we added a new field to the acronyms table, so we need to regenerate the table. Now I'll build and run and I'll create a new test user for myself and for my coworker, Mick Pringle. I'll also post a acronym for BRB, that is be right back, and I'll set the TIL user ID to one, which is myself. I'll also create one more acronym for AFK or away from keyboard. And finally, I'll give Mick YOLO or you only live once on his TIL user ID, which is two. Let's see what this looks like in the database. I'll open up PSQL and look at the acronyms table and I'll see that it contains the ID of the user that each acronym belongs to. If I select everything from acronyms, then I see that each acronym is now correctly pointing to the user that it belongs to. It seems to be storing the data in the database, so let's see how we can look up the acronyms for a particular user. To do this, I'll open up TILUserController.swift and add a new method to list the acronyms for a particular user. To do this, I can call children on the user object. This is a built-in method provided by Vapor. You can optionally pass in the name of the ID field, but I'm gonna just pass nil because I use the default name for this field, so I'm fine. Then you need to pass in the type of that parent object, which is acronym. I'll get all of these objects and return them as JSON. Then I'll register this route and add routes. Basically, the path will be a get to slash users slash x slash acronyms, where x is the ID of the user to list the acronyms for. Now I'll build and run, and I'll go to users slash one slash acronyms to list the acronyms for user one, which is my account. And all right, I can see the acronyms assigned to my account. Getting the children for an object is something you wanna do quite frequently. So let me show you a little shortcut to save yourself some typing. I'll open TILUser.swift and add an extension to get the acronyms for a user object. It will run the same code as we did before. Back in TILUserController.swift, I can simply call acronyms now, which makes things nice and clean. If I build and run, then it works as expected. 
At this point, we've seen how to get the children from a parent, but what about the other way around? To do this, I'll open acronymscontroller.swift, and I'll create a method to list the user for a particular acronym. This time, I call parent on the acronym object, which is another built-in method provided by Vapor. Here I pass in the value of the ID to use, nil since I'm using the default field name, and the type of the parent object. I'll get that and return it as JSON. At this point, I'm moving beyond the basic REST interface for this controller, so I'm going to delete make resource and resource representable, and I'll create a method to manually add these routes. At the end, I'll add a new route for a git to slash acronym slash x slash user, where x is the name of the acronym to display what user it belongs to. Back in main.swift, I'll remove register routes and call my new add routes method instead. Now I can build and run, list the acronyms, and take a look at acronym one. Then I can look at the user that it belongs to with slash user. Just as before, I can make an extension in acronym.swift to create a helper method to load the user, which will save some typing. And back in acronymscontroller.swift, I can now use this helper method to simplify the code. If I build and run, it works as expected. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to create parent-child relationships between model objects and vapor. In the next screencast, we're going to take a look at one other type of model relations, a sibling relationship, which involves creating a pivot table. Speaking of relationships, I should really make a graph of my past relationships. And imagine it now. One axis will be the x axis, and one axis will be the y axis. All right, I'm out.